we've told you about the dangers of an NGO, a foreign funded NGO, and we actually have a practical example of a foreign funded NGO, and exactly the consequences that it brings to our great land in the form of Gun Free South Africa. So Gun Free South Africa, as of right now, is really, really sad with the South African Police Service because the South African Police Service and the Central Farms Registry is just not working. There's paper everywhere. Guns are being sold from police stations. So Gun Free SA is very angry and wants this to stop right now. But what they failed to mention is that they are broadly responsible for the way this has turned out. Because Byron... Gun Free SA was started after 1994, so when the blacks took over, Gun Free SA came into power. And what was one of the first things they tried to do as Gun Free SA? So Gun Free South Africa was mysteriously created in 1995, right after the blacks took power. Because, you know, the problem that Gun Free South Africa seemed to have is that they were terrified that the blacks would somehow get their hands on guns and then go on a killing rampage. It's fairly racist to me, but apparently that's exactly what Gun Free South Africa thought. Gun Free South Africa in a modern time then decided that what they were going to do is they were actually going to change the South African law so that it represented more British law, you know, so that we didn't actually have lots of firearms in the country. So the way they thought this would all get done is we would license every firearm, we would create the central firearm register, we would make the whole licensing of a firearm ridiculously onerous. You'd have to pass background checks and then you'd have to have training and so forth. Lead up to 2022, what we have is a complete mess of a licensing process. And on top of supporting the Farms Control Act that was passed in 2004, and that's very important for later in the video, Gun Free SA also advocated for gun amnesty. So if your gun is not licensed in any way, you could hand it over to the police without any recourse in law. And they proudly claim on their own website, that at the end of the 2010 firearms amnesty, close to 43,000 firearms and over 400,000 rounds of ammunition were handed in to the police. Let us take a wild guess what the police actually did with those guns and ammunition. Did they, let me think, did they destroy them? Or did they sell them to gangsters in the K-flats? We all know our police service is corrupt as fuck. And a lot of the police services, it was told to them by the firearm industry, would probably sell those guns back to gangsters. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. A serious amount of firearms, over 40,000 firearms, landed up in the hands of gangsters and criminals, all thanks to the police. Ramon, how is this not something that you could forecast as happening? I mean, the irony of Gun Free SA is that they didn't want blacks to get guns after 1994, but they trusted black police officers who destroy those guns during the course of the amnesty periods, which Gun Free South Africa advocated for in the very first place. But also, Gun Free South Africa wanted the black government to administer the Central Firearms Registry. So now an average person who lives in a township or whose life is under threat cannot actually get a legal firearm. It costs thousands of rands. You need a safe, you need training, you need to write exams. This takes a lot of time. It costs a lot of money. And thanks to the Farms Control Act, which Gun Free South Africa supported and advocated for, you now have a situation that disarms poor people in South Africa. But of course, they do go on and claim that, oh, look, but the murder rate was going down after the Farms Control Act came into operation in 2004. Yes, but it was going down since 1998. It just followed the same trend line. The Firearms Control Act had no effect whatsoever on the murder rate in South Africa. What you find is a Western-funded NGO imposing Western rules on an African nation, and now you've destroyed the firearms industry, you destroyed the hunting industry, and most importantly, you have destroyed people's capability to protect themselves from criminals because the police can't be asked to do their jobs. This is the legacy of Western-funded NGOs in South Africa. I mean, the minute you actually take a legal reg regime that made it easy for people to gain access to firearms for the purposes of self-defense, which we wholly support. We're 100% support that. It's a fundamental human right. It was given to us by our creator, not by a freaking state. So the idea that the state can tell us not to defend ourselves is like food sake. The problem became that the right or the need to defend yourself didn't disappear when you entered in the Firearms Control Act. You still needed to protect yourself because we have an underperforming state and an underperforming police service. We can't provide the right amounts of policing for the country of this size with the population of our size, especially the breadth and size of it. It just can't be done. 
because there was still a need to provide self-defense, the individual had to resort to buying illegal firearms because of the only way that they could do it in the township. I can buy an illegal firearm for 500 bucks or I can go through the licensing process and it's going to cost me two and a half thousand rand. Which means that since the Firearms Control Act, the amount of illegal firearms in the country have increased, not decreased, because it's the easiest and quickest way now to get a firearm for the purpose of self-defense. Anybody that has a firearm, you are incentivizing criminals to target those individuals because they need to supply the firearms in order to fulfill the demand. This is basic market forces. Any moron understands the easiest way to reduce illegal firearms in South Africa is to relax the rules. The minute you relax the rules, the proliferation of legal firearms will go. We'll have more people with legal firearms who can be controlled by the law, and we'll have more active citizens who can be involved in day-to-day self-defense for them and their community. This is a de facto fact. Gun-free South Africa can claim that it's not. They can lie to us. They can manipulate the statistics. They can tell us whatever bullshit they want in order for us to meet a European standard. We are not a European nation. What we are seeing here is we are seeing European and foreign-funded policy on our shores, and we are seeing the consequence of it. The problem is these foreigners don't live here. They don't have to live with our crime rates. They don't have to live with our family being slaughtered. They don't have to live with a failed economy because of high crime rates. They can come here and impose whatever bullshit they want on us. But the best thing that we can do is expel them from these lands. Indeed. And what does Gunfrey SA think about people trying to defend themselves in 2023? Do you think they'll give them the tools to defend themselves with? Or, as according to their Twitter, they will teach women to do karate to imaginary foes because, you know, that's the way to defend yourself against criminals in this country. This is a joke of an organization that has imposed its will on the South African people, has increased crime rates, has increased gun proliferation rates, and most importantly, has increased the danger to poor, especially black people in this country because they are not able to defend themselves. Shame on them. They should be banned.